Hello and welcome to another Sam Tutoring video. We've reached February already, which means for many of us our New Year's resolutions are but a distant memory and we've also reached the February half term, which means in the UK and other parts of the world you have a week off from school or if you're in university you have what may be called in many universities and colleges reading week, a time for relaxation, maybe you want to catch up on your sleep, Sleep. Maybe you want to binge watch on Netflix. It's the mic that I know and the mic that I fell for, he wouldn't do this. And if all of your feelings are still there, then it only points to one thing. And it's that you're keeping something from me. <sighs> oh, Mike. Oh, well, Mike. Why do we play these games? Why can't you be with me? Yeah, eh, 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 eh. Not today. That is not what we're going to be using our holiday for because it provides a great opportunity for us to collect academic data about what's working in our learning and what's not. So I'm going to talk in this video about some tips that you can use to supercharge your half term or if you're in university, your reading week. Now, a great place to begin is to divide your work into two major types, that's high density work and low density work. High density work is work that requires focus, that requires your attention, that requires your time. This could be writing an essay. You have to research, you have to structure your paragraphs, you have to think about how you're going to communicate what it is you want to say and you have to go back through and refine what it is you're writing or maybe it takes the form of a set of maths problems you have to go through the equations maybe you cover them in class you have to go through the examples understand the examples and then be able to work through your question set applying the same principles you've previously learned to a new set of questions similarly you have low density density work and that is work that you can do on autopilot work that is very repetitive and maybe doesn't require too much thought or even time in some cases and these include things like doing chores doing administrative tasks doing laundry doing anything that you're very familiar with but these tasks are very important because they can directly affect the time and your ability to do these high density tasks so they are not to be ignored now i definitely would encourage you going forward to incorporate planning into your academic process. Set aside a consistent day whereby you can look at everything that you need to do and allocate time accordingly. Now you're going to need to allocate more time for high density tasks as they require more thought and more work. Ideally you want to be in the flow state. Now the flow state, if you remember from previous videos, is the state in which you produce most of your best work, where you have that laser-like focus and you're really engaged and immersed in what you're doing. In that sort of state, you're likely to be able to work for many hours is when we all produce our best work. With high density tasks, it's not really gonna be of much use to you if you allocate maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes or maybe a little window in between two other things that you are doing. However, it's a perfect opportunity to insert these low density tasks, the ones that don't require as much thought and as much time. That way, whatever time you have during your day, you can be using it effectively by completing the goals that you've set for yourself when you've started planning. Now, when you are making your plan, you have to be incredibly specific about what it is you're going to do in each study session. Writing something like revised maths or revised biology is not going to help you a lot because these subjects are very broad. Whereas if you say something like we're going to revise quadratic equations or we're going to revise respiration or the AT synthase cycle in respiration these are more specific and these are actually actionable in your mind this is going to be a lot more palatable than revise the whole subject so be specific when you are actually planning so you know what you're supposed to be doing in each individual session when planning it's essential that you prioritize the reality is that some tasks are more important than others and in your to-do list you may not 
complete absolutely everything. But if you ensure that your most important tasks are at the top, you will always be able to make progress despite the fact that you don't complete your to-do list. So this also allows you to develop the skill of being able to identify which tasks are more important than the other. This also allows you to exploit the fact that your willpower is a finite resource. You're going to be much more motivated to get work done at the beginning of your study sessions than you are when you've done four or five at the end of the day. So put the most important tasks before or conversely what you could do is put some of the littler tasks in the beginning to just warm yourself up so you feel more ready to complete the bigger tasks. Either way, it's important that you prioritize and if you don't complete all of your goals in a set day, you at least complete the majority of them or the most important ones. So now we've spoken about some of the things that are going to be on your list, how are we actually going to get them done? Two words for you, artificial, pressure and that's basically the act of setting deadlines. Now I don't know if you've noticed but getting towards a deadline or an exam you suddenly become super motivated to work. You're able to grind out those long hours and probably most times than not you get the work done. Why? Because there is pressure causing you to do work. Now you know if you don't complete the assignment by the due date, there will be consequences. You can use a similar principle when you're thinking about work. Now it's difficult when you consider this particular half term because as I mentioned before, your exams are not right now. So you can be happy writing the first three words of your title, but that won't really be able to run during Easter time or study leave because you know you have to do a lot more. When considering artificial pressure, it's also very helpful to think of something called Parkinson's law. And that basically states that a task will take up the time allotted to it. So if you give yourself three hours to do a set of problems, chances are you will use up all of that time. There's no impetus for you to do it in a faster amount of time, i.e. artificial pressure. So if you schedule something whereby you have to be done by a certain time, you're gonna be more likely to complete it. So using the principles from Parkinson's law, you can deliberately schedule things around the time when you're supposed to be done, so it creates this artificial pressure so you can get your work done a lot faster than you would otherwise. One key, key, key concept that we have to discuss is the fact that things always or nearly always take longer than you planned. That's something called a planning fallacy and all of us tend to be very, very bad at predicting how long a task should and will take, especially without experience. Now, this phenomenon can be summarized with the Hofstetter's law, which states, it always takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account the Hofstetter's law. And this is where we get the concept of a fudge ratio. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't mean this Hofstetter, I mean this Hofstetter. But interestingly, this Hofstetter is named after this Hofstetter's father. And that's your fact title of the day. If you wanted to be extra and actually calculate a fudge ratio, what you would do is you would make an estimate of the time it takes to do a task, and then you would actually record the time it actually takes. And you would use the time that it takes, divided by the time that you estimated that it would take, and this should be your fudge ratio. So anytime you're planning in the future, you will just multiply by this fudge ratio. Now, you may not be the most organized person in the world. And before you beat yourself up, it's not 100% your fault. There are actually natural systems that are working against you. How you may ask? Through the concept of entropy. Entropy can be defined as the lack of order or predictability, i.e. a gradual decline into disorder. So it's basically a measure of how much chaos there is in a system. 
And this makes a lot of sense, especially when you think about it academically. Um, it's the reason why your desktop can be very messy if you don't organize your files, um, if you don't sort out your notes, it can be very difficult to find something specific that you're looking for. So whatever systems that you generate and you build, you have to constantly maintain them to ensure that entropy doesn't increase. Now using the example of files, it's very important that you take some time and you just organize all your work so you can find it very easily because when you actually come to half term and you're looking for specific things, you do not want to be wasting time looking for things that are just buried under a mountain of files and downloads. Also it helps because you need an inventory of what you've already done. There's not many things worse than doing something over half term, working hard at it and realizing that you've already done it. You want to be able to use your time as effectively as possible. And that means being aware of what you've done and what you haven't done. And the best way to do that is to have an organized set of files, notes, documents, books, whatever you need when it comes to your learning and your education. Now this may take quite a bit of time, especially if you've never done it before, but it's definitely worth the time investment. So some of the ways that you can organize your files and folders are by year, by subject, by module. All of these things are really helpful for you and you can go into as much depth as you need to. And you also need to get into the habit of saving your documents and your files into the formats that you've created. And over time, if they do get messy again, you'll need to spend time just making sure that the entropy of that particular system decreases. So along with your generic kind of systems on computers, there are also cloud-based services. So you can save your files and your documents on things such as Dropbox, Google Drive or any other cloud service that only needs a Wi-Fi connection or internet connection to be able to access. That's really helpful because it means that if you forget your computer or you don't have access to it for whatever reason, all you need is a Wi-Fi connection to be able to access your files anywhere you are in the world and that's really helpful. Also, it kind of helps to mention that you make sure you have access to the right resources. So whether that be handouts from your lecturers, professors or teachers, the right textbooks, all of these things are going to be needed if you're going to do some significant work over the half term period. Now, the final thing that I want to discuss in this video is procrastination. Now, you can be rest assured when you try to implement the things we've discussed in this video, it will try to rear its ugly head. But I want to think about it from a slightly different angle now. Now, for many of us, procrastination takes the form of five simple words. I don't feel like it. Your emotions can be an indication of how you're feeling in that moment, but to have a situation where you're constantly being ruled by your emotions is a downward spiral to failure. So take it upon yourself to say, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know in the long term that it's gonna benefit you. You know why you made the decision in the first place to at least try what you're trying to do. And this feeling of, I don't feel like it, so I'm not going to do it, is something that you're really going to have to get over if you want to be truly successful. Successful people often have exactly the same emotions as everybody else, but what separates them is their ability to override it and they understand the power of their decision to the point whereby it becomes a habit. There's a real distance between where you think you should be and sometimes where you actually are. You don't need to expect that you're gonna become an amazing student overnight, especially if you haven't been in a position whereby you've been applying these principles or studying or having good routines in the first place. So be kind to yourself and actually give yourself time and the opportunity to grow. It's incredibly important to remember that all the tips and everything that we've discussed in this video are designed to make things easier for you to get 
to that flow state to get to the place where you're working and you're productive and you're using your time very effectively. They are not actually designed to do the work for you, but just to make it easier for you to do the work. And that's about it for this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the suggestions and how they've actually gone for you, why you try them out during half term and beyond. What else do you want to see? Please do let me know in the comment section. I'll also put a link in the description for the companion blog post for this video and also some other links that you may find helpful. If you're interested in the services that Sam Tutoring offer for either your school or private tuition, please do head over to the website. And yeah, I look forward to really being a lot more consistent with this channel this year. I've got so much that I want to cover, so many ideas I have. So why don't you hit that subscribe button and become part of this family. I'm looking forward to going on this journey with you and I'll see you soon. Still thinking of like how to sign up. I don't know if it's a kind of A or you know maybe a A or you know. So do let me know in the comment section. Maybe we need a handshake. <laughs>